This is Divinity 2, quite a monster of a video game. Literally, this is one of those games that some people will love, while other people will get frustrated quickly and never want to see it again. I'm somewhere in the middle on this one because while I enjoy certain aspects of the game, the developers clearly expect players to spend a lot of time playing it and investigate every nook and cranny of this massive world that they've created. Another one to add to the collection. It can be a bit much at times, but if you like to explore a gigantic world full of quests and monsters and things to slay with a complex plot and numerous subplots, take a close look at this one. Forgive me, stranger. It's not very often I get visitors. The girl not be brought back to life. It is Damien who will die. That was Talana's quest. Now it is yours. This is from the same publisher as Sacred 2, one of my favorite games from 2009. Sacred 2 is a massive role-playing exploration game where you can level your character up and stuff, but it basically holds your hand the whole way through the game. It's always very, very clear what you were supposed to do in Sacred 2. Divinity 2 bites your hand, and then when it's done with that, it starts gnawing at your knees. For a console game, it's so complex that they even tell you during some loading screens if you're stuck to visit their website. I've seen some people complaining about the combat in Divinity 2. That didn't really bother me that much. It doesn't stand out in any way, but what, what bothered me is that you have to search everything in this game. Everything from desks to jars, corners, tables, dead bodies, you name it. And you have to point at it each time. And when we're talking about searching a hundred different jars in a dungeon, that gets old fast. And if you miss something, then you can't open a door, for example. And, and keys in particular needed to unlock important things are about four pixels large. They're practically impossible to spot in this massive cluttered environment. I've had an easier time finding my real car keys. Seriously, like, like, make them sparkle or something. Like they do in Bioshock. What's the, uh, there's this one part in the game where you have to take out several pieces of lettuce from a pot to find an important item laying in the pot. Some people will love this. It kind of drove me crazy. My wounds are grave. My other big issue with this game is that eventually you turn into a dragon and they give you a sneak peek at this early in the game. And it's really cool because you can fly around as a dragon and like burn people. But 10 hours into the game, I'm stuck in Maxos's temple or whatever and I'm still not able to turn into a dragon. As I said, some people will love this because it is a challenge. And it's a cool fantasy adventure. But don't expect to be anywhere quickly. The things that really make this game good are somewhat lost in the things that make it tedious. Leveling your character up, for example. There's not randomly generating enemies in this game. When you wipe out all of the orcs or ogres or whatever in a certain area, they're gone, which is probably more realistic. But if you want to just get your character strengthened up for a big fight, you've got to solve quests, some of which are kind of boring. I'd rather just slay hundreds of monsters like I did in Sacred 2. Make that thousands of monsters. That game is just a monster slaying carnival. That's what this one could have used. Because the environment is beautiful. It's a really good looking game. Very imaginative. The story is told through books that you'll pick up laying around and there's some cutscenes with characters. Very rich and detailed. But the environment is what steals the show here. Very nice design on the buildings. And armor and the landscape and whatnot. That stuff's really cool. But uh, as, as much as I respect that and as much as I enjoy a fantasy world, I would have preferred to explore it more through chaos, destruction, and swordplay. But that's just me. Well, probably not just me. I imagine a lot of you will uh, feel the same way. There's nothing a minigun and flamethrower can't solve in a magical land of adventure.
All right, I like that you can kick the chickens and kill them for experience points and then pick up a chicken leg, which increases your health. But you can't hack and slash the pigs. By, by this logic, shouldn't I be able to get a ham sandwich out of one of those pigs? Or at least some bacon? Divinity 2 does have a nice sense of humor about it, and the writing style is very similar, actually, to the Sacred 2 game I've been talking about. Good old sarcasm in the dialogue. And you can select some goofy responses to things. There is a lot to like about this game, but you really have to be into it to appreciate it. Which is why I can't ever tell you yes or no, it's good, it's bad. The game claims to have 60 hours of gameplay. I think that's a low number. I think it's 60 hours if you know what you're doing. Maybe it's 60 hours if you know every basket that every important item is in. <laughs> but you don't, you have to look in every corner. If you're into playing a game where you really have to take notes about a few things, like who you talk to, what you have to do, where something is, well, you get your money's worth in Divinity 2. This is on PC, it's on Xbox 360. We're watching the Xbox 360 version. To end the review, my guy will take a leap of faith. See if his legs are strong enough to survive the impact. <laughs>